Hello everyone, welcome to The Moon Sliver. This is an exploration horror game from David... Uh, something. I would pronounce that last name, but it would literally be a crime to do that. It would be an act of involuntary name slaughter, so let's avoid that. This game is available on Desora, as well as itch.io, itch whatever that site is. Um, if, it's kind of a weird name, but if you've never heard of the site, I've actually used it before a couple times. It's quite good, and I actually prefer it to Desura, so don't be scared of its strange name. This game is also on Steam Greenlight, by the way, so if you would like to help this get onto Steam, then I'm sure the developer would be very grateful, and I will have links to everything I just mentioned in the description. Now, let's begin. Alright, here we go. Pretty basic controls. Move around, jump, interact, flashlight. Pretty much it. Okay, so this is a very, very heavily story-focused game. So there's gonna be a lot of text, so let's look around. It's also got a kind of strange mechanism for actually delivering the text to you, as you are about to see, so let's go ahead and examine this fireplace. Ellie was a sullen and beautiful girl, the youngest of all of them with a mind unfit for lofty thoughts. She had once come in here to see if there was any old firewood. Otherwise, she stayed in her cluttered house, where it was warm and familiar. So here's the strange thing about the kind of text system, is that it shows up in gigantic, very intrusive bars at the kind of the top and bottom of the screen. And, uh, Another kind of strange, weird thing. It took me a little while to kind of figure out exactly what's going on, but I realized that after you examine something, it actually basically stays examined, so that the text pops up again just when you get near it. You don't have to re-examine it. So now that I've looked at this fireplace, for example, it just pops up every time I get near. Which can be a little bit strange, as you might end up in a situation like this where there's a lot of objects together, so you just have, like, a bunch of text always at the top of the screen. Anyway, let's get more into it. Isa was the oldest, and if not the wisest, certainly the most learned. She remembered when Josiah still lived, and she would sit on this crate and listen to his stories. Those memories, like so many others, were bittersweet. Daniel was a quiet man, who spent his life lost in the books of old, or lost in his own thoughts. He wondered where the barrels had come from and who had put them there. Abel loved Isa, and he loved Daniel and Ellie. But when his mind wasn't turned toward their well-being, it was filled with thoughts of bleak hopelessness. Sometimes he would rifle through the barrel, and the promise of undiscovered trinkets raised his spirits, if only temporarily. My uh, flashlight's running out of power, by the way. I can actually recharge it, but I don't think there's anywhere to recharge it here. Nope. So, uh, I guess I'll just turn it off. <laughs> see if there's anywhere else to examine here. Even though I can't really see anything. I would at least be able to see the little, uh, icon pop up. No, I think that's it. See, I have some strange situations like this where once you've examined everything in a room, you kind of just have tons of text that kind of blends together at the top of the screen. It's a little bit awkward, but, uh... I've played it for a short amount of time just to check it out, and I've been impressed with the writing so far. It's quite good. Oh, and as it says there at the bottom of the screen, explore freely, piece the story together. When night falls, enter the mountain. Yesterday, four people lived on this island. Now, only one remains. So, here we go. A small island, and I am apparently the only one left. Let's take a look around. See if we can piece together the story. I'm also curious about the horror elements. Because so far, it's obviously not really scary, but it does say, When Night Falls, Enter the Mountain. 
So apparently night's going to fall, and I wonder what's going to happen when that happens. I'll take a look around this building, see if there's anything other than the door. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's a recharge station. There we go. Uh, somehow you just jam your flashlight into an electrical socket and it recharges it. I'm not going to question it, but uh, it is a little bit strange. Don't think it works like that, but... Anyway. Oh. Seems to be locked. Okay, yeah, so it does throw a lot of text at you. I think... I think the text on the bottom is your current thoughts. And the text on the top is, like, memories, I think. I think. So let's read the bottom one first. They reached the ruins and strolled leisurely through them toward the shoreline. Isa could remember when the old buildings still stood here, filled with families. Yeah, so I think I'm playing as Isa. And I think that's the current thoughts at the bottom. And memories on the top. I think. But the weird thing about it is at the bottom it says, um, they reach the ruins. Which is strange because I'm supposed to be the only one left, right? So who is they? Shouldn't it be I reach the ruins? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Alright. Back to the top. The memories. We're old, Isa, said Abel, and we're getting older. We've been getting older since we were born, said Isa. She was always smiling. Abel never smiled. It must have been a long time since this building was actually... actually stood properly here, because, I mean, this is been worn down to nothing but a tiny nub of what was once here. There's almost nothing left. I feel like I missed life, he said. Like it whizzed right by while I wasn't looking, and I'm watching it disappear into the horizon. Stuck in this prison. Oh, come on, she said. Look out at the water. Isn't it beautiful? It's lonely, he said. Lonely and... infinite. Wait, what did that say? I'm sorry, he said. And he cried because he often cried during these talks. For what? she said. For a lot of things. These conversations were not new. Long ago, Isla had learned to love Abel despite, and for, his despondency. She hugged him as the wind tossed her long gray hair around. Long gray hair, and they're just talking about how they're getting old. They stared out at the water together for a time, then continued to walk along the shoreline. What if I could just follow the shoreline and I'll get their next thought then? Yeah, I mean, is this place flooded? Because... Power poles should not be in the water. Like, what the hell happened here? And how does this place even have any power? Because I recharged my flashlight at an outlet. These are power lines. Some of them are in the water. And regardless, none of them even have any... Well, none of them even have any power actual lines connecting them together, so... The power is obviously not coming from there. Is there some sort of a generator?
ground's all cracked there, and it's, like, pushing up. Almost like something's trying to come out. But I'm probably seeing too much in it. A strange acidic smell emanated from the pipe. Hmm. Isa kept a smile on her face, although she did not feel like smiling. She sat down beside the flashlight. What about Ellie? Has Ellie mentioned anything to you? She said. She didn't take it either, he said. Nor did I, and nor did Abel, she said, and yet it's gone. Fresh air from an unseen crack in the corner cut through the room's stuffy musk. Daniel, you're the last one I gave the key to, said Isa. Daniel stared at the mysterious control panels. He didn't meet her eyes. He never met anyone's eyes. I didn't take it, he said. Why would I take it? I'm the one that told you it was missing. Yeah, what is this control panel? It's... Mistian in its design. The dry piles smelled faintly sour. Dry and sour piles of something. What the hell is it? The rusted junk cast shadows on the... Oh, can't really read it. On the opposite wall. How do you know Abel didn't take it? He said. Because I trust him, she said. He's a dismal man, but he would never hurt any of us. Do you trust Ellie? Daniel didn't answer immediately. I trust all of you, he said. Because that's how we have to live. There was a quiet scurrying in the corner. A mouse or a rat? I'm saying that she knows more than she's telling us, said Ellie. Wait, okay, so the bottom text does not mean current thoughts necessarily? Okay, well, I'm confused. I have no idea why they're sometimes split to the top and sometimes to the bottom. Is it just when they get too big? No, but... No, I've seen them only appear on the bottom. I, I don't know. Anyway... What is your problem with Isa? Daniel said, putting his book down. He was annoyed at being interrupted here. All right, Daniel was the reader. I'm saying that she knows more than she's telling us, said Ellie, so they're talking about Isa. Maybe I'm not playing as Isa then, I have no idea. My problem is that she's a liar, said Ellie angrily fiddling with the knobs on the machine as she paced around, and that I have to keep explaining this to you over and over again. You don't know her like I know her. Exactly. You're not an impartial judge, he said. She keeps the chapel locked, and she's the only one with a key, said Ellie, leaning on the barrels and folding her arms. So you're saying she took it, he said. The wood was older than anyone could remember, and it had rotted and fused with the floor.
It's really fun to just examine stuff. I love exploration games where you can just click on so many things and get more of the story. What is this? The mysterious liquid had drained from the tank and into the water long ago. <laughs> Alright, so this is the mountain that I'm supposed to travel into when it becomes nighttime. <laughs> These are some sad trees. This place was a forest once. A, a forest made of three trees? In a tiny little corner? What? It must have been a small forest. And these skeletons were all that remained. Isaac could remember the glorious living trees. Barely. A damp tangle of trees and foliage. Free to run wild and unkempt. Okay, well I'm guessing this place has been flooded or something, because if there was a forest here, it couldn't have possibly been right here. You need more room for a forest. Well, this is awkward. I'm hitting invisible walls. Okay, I probably shouldn't go this way. That's probably the entrance to the mountain. Come back when night falls. Yep. There were no spiderwebs on the skeletal remains. The last of the spiders died years ago. The night was wild and cold. Wait, what? But it's not nighttime. It is definitely wild, though. I mean, there's some serious wind. The monstrous tracks leading from the hatch were brand new, but the wind quickly erased them. Okay, four button combination. Yeah, this place is definitely flooded. Some of those buildings are almost completely submerged. What I want to know is, if even the spiders have died off years ago, then how the hell am I still alive? Like, what have I been eating? This place is dead. It's so dead. There's smoke coming out of that. The chimney of that building. I think. Someone's made a fire. Daniel sat, sat with Ellie under the tree, his arm around her. There's another one. The door had rusted shut. It would never open. I wonder what secrets secrets will remain always locked behind. Yeah, that one and this one have smoke coming out of the chimneys. Let's check them out. Ooh, I like the atmospheric lighting. I kind of ruin it when I turn on my flashlight. What were you and Abel doing at his house yesterday while I was climbing the mountain? He answered. Uh, oh, he answered, casually flipping through the book on her table. It was covered in dust. What 
the heck is that? Looks like a CD spindle or whatever you call them. <laughs> Somehow I doubt that though. It seems implausible. I don't think they had computers on this island. Ellie was laying on the bed. Daniel came in. She scowled at him suspiciously and beautifully. What were you and Isa doing in the old power building? What were you talking about? She glared at him. I'm going to get wood, she spat. Did you think I was too stupid to know, he said. I'm going to get wood. So I guess a key part of this is trying to figure out, trying to figure out exactly in what order these events happen. Because I'm getting these snippets, but I need to like put them in order. So there's obviously a lot of suspicion between all these people, these four people. A lot of suspicion. They keep, talk they keep talking about hiding or uh, taking the thing. And what were you doing here? What were you doing there? Why is the chapel locked? What is she hiding? Okay, so what order did this happen in? Alright, so this is where Daniel first came in. So this has got to be the first one. Daniel came in. Okay. What were you talking about? Oh, yeah, this is the next one. What were you and Abel doing at his house yesterday while I was climbing the mountain? He answered, casually flipping through the book on her table. It was covered in dust. All right, so she, she asks him where he was. He asks her where she was. And then she glared at him. And then she went to get wood. Okay, I see. Gotta get the order of the events correct. <laughs> Was that a flashlight on a string? Daniel took down the dead flashlight and replaced it with a fully charged one, listening to Abel talk and thinking unrelated thoughts. He preferred the sharp illumination of flashlights to the dimness of flame. I need a charging station. Is there one in here? No. Abel often visited Daniel. He loved to talk, and Daniel loved to listen. Isa and I were out for a walk, said Abel as he entered. I thought I'd stop by before you got caught up in a book. Daniel put his book down. Hello, he said. His expression, con his expression confused Abel. Daniel stared at the pile of wood. He hadn't burned wood for months. Let's talk about Ellie instead. Abel was silent for a moment. What about Ellie? He said. Daniel didn't need to answer. Abel swallowed. All right. Let's talk about Ellie. Okay, what order? All right, so... Hello, Daniel said. His expression confused Abel. Strange expression on his face. Let's see. This is either the second or the third event. This is probably the second one. Yeah. He stared at the pile of wood. He hadn't burned wood for months. And then he replaced the flashlight, right? Yeah, he took down the dead flashlight and replaced it with a fully charged one, listening to Abel talk and thinking unrelated thoughts. That's gotta be the order of events, I think. Let's see if the one with the fire burning in it for last. Whoa. Candles. Lots and lots of candles. They could make more candles. They couldn't make more wood. So Abel burned candles. There is an evil man on this island, and I know him well. We play together as youths. We have cried together. We have eaten together. We have loved the same women. Betrayed the same women. 
He is my constant companion, and my worst enemy. He puppets my arms, legs, and mouth to his own selfish ends, and secretly hurts everyone I love as I watch, helpless. With their unshed, unfelt blood on my hands, he gifts my flesh with indescribable pleasures, and blights my soul with unutterable despair. His name is Sin, and we are irrevocably bound together. Surely there exists no hell worse than this. Talk of Sin. I do notice that the names of the characters seem to be very religious, right? I mean, Abel? Isa? Yeah. Hmm. Oh my god. Massive, massive walls of text. Awkward. Abel read to escape. Daniel read to feed his lofty, strange thoughts. Isa read to pass the time. But Ellie? As far as Abel knew, she hadn't opened a book in years. What did she do all day? He didn't know. Sometimes he worried about her. He worried about all of them. Were they as melancholy as he was? Is it like a cross made of sticks? Seems like it. Oh, what is that? It's a little locked box. A locked box. Some sort of lock box. What childlike emptiness I feel to find the most peaceful solace in fantasy. To find in masquerades a truth more vivid than reality. What sort of twisted villains were the ancient writers to taunt us with unreachable worlds more beautiful than our own? We have enough stored food to live long lives. When our wood runs out, we will be cold, but only so cold as to be uncomfortable. The water is rising, but it will be many years before it reaches our homes. Technically, we survive, but to what end? This island is all the world we know. And it is nothing but the broken pieces of a fairy tale. The water is rising. She took the knife from the shelf. The blade was dull and rusty, but it was still pointed. She was not smiling. Oh! The key, yeah, between she was not smiling and the key, this has got to be Isis place. It's got to be the key to the chapel, right? And she's described as always smiling. Well, almost always. I believe the word of Hector, and the religious teachings that were passed on to me. Maybe the moon is still out there, hidden beneath some cloud of darkness. And maybe the ones who went before us are waiting there. There's no way to know. We have to wait for death to find out. And truth be told, I'm ready. I'm ready for the beginning of a new adventure. Isa could not talk to Abel about her feelings, because Abel was overburdened with his own. So she often sat at her desk and wrote. She did not know who would ever read her papers, but there was something profound about preserving thoughts so that they would live long after there was nobody around to read them. Ooh, tiny little key, come here. That's most likely to this box, huh? There we go, what is that? Isa didn't know what the object was, but she remembered her father tinkering with it in his workshop when she was a girl. 
The workshop and the adjoining home were now far underwater. She was not a young woman, but even now, seeing it brought her comfort. Abel came in. Wait, how do get into storage? How do? How do you? How do I? What? <laughs> I think there's a little bit of a error in the text there. How do I get into the storage? He asked. She shut and locked the box. I've told you before, she said. I, I forgot, he said. I don't go there often. Press the first three until they click. Leave the fourth alone, she said. Oh, that's got to be to the hatch. Yeah, the first one. Well, it could be either the first one that I saw or the second one that is right next to us that's broken. I'll try it on both. Okay, what is that? It would help if my flashlight wasn't trying to give me a seizure. I don't know. It looks like some sort of ancient Game Boy. That's exactly what it is. I'm going to go with that. Um. Okay, it's a little bit creepier now. It's becoming nighttime, and I don't like the noises. Alright, it's got to be the password to the other one. Also, what's up here? Recharge station, okay. I... I don't know if I'm supposed to be up here. Uh... Well, I suppose I can climb to the top of them. Oh! Yep, here we go. Whoa, what the hell is that? Daniel carefully made his way along the ridge. What is that massive bar in the sky? Okay, you actually are supposed to be up here. He knew what Ellie and Abel were doing. He'd known for a long time, and had decided to ignore it. Something that was becoming increasingly difficult to do. He reminded himself that they all four had to trust each other, and rely on each other, as he had done so many times before. But it was a hollow reminder, and he didn't really believe it anymore. He sat cross-legged on the very peak of the mountain, staring off to the horizon. What was out there? He did not know, and did not think it knowable. Um, I believe what's out there is a gigantic rendering error. Ugh. Okay, I'm coming down now. Let's see if I can open this. Did, did that work? Oh! It did work. What was that noise? This is supposed to be storage, right? Um, so I guess this is where they store their food. I don't like this place. Ellie was uneasy. The darkness had never felt this menacing before. It seemed alive. 
watchful. The code was long forgotten. Nobody had been below in many years. Hmm. The funny thing is... There's only four binary switches. You could brute force that quite easily. And if it's long forgotten, then maybe there's no other choice. I wonder why they didn't try it, though. It wouldn't have taken them very long. Hmm. Jesus, why are these tunnels so long? Ellie? Daniel's voice echoed around the tunnels. Silence. She couldn't explain the feeling. It was as though something was lurking around every corner, staying out of sight, staying ahead of her. Daniel heard soft, scratching footsteps behind him. He turned and shined his flashlight around the tunnel. Nothing. Oh, God damn it, now I want to turn around. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Oh, my flashlight's running out of power. Wonderful. Recharge station, recharge station. Oh, thank God. Okay, two ways to go. Which way? Let's go left. This place is like a maze. He called again. Ellie? Still no answer. But he heard the footsteps again. Fuck. I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything, so I'm not turning around. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, I'm completely lost at this point. I have no idea where I am. He didn't even have time to cry out at the shadow silhouetted in his flashlight beam, lunging toward him. And that's where he dropped his flashlight. Right there, the one that's still on. Uh... Yeah, I don't know where I am at this point. Oh, not the flashlight again. Okay. Um, she felt its breath before she felt its claws, and then she was gone. It's where the wood is stored, apparently, and there's another flashlight. Am I going to be the last flashlight to be dropped? How the hell did I fit in between there? Whoa, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. Whoa! I can compress myself down to like a quarter of an inch or something. Amazing! 
looking for like hidden keys and stuff. I wonder how dark it'd be if I traveled around here without my flashlight on. Okay, let's not do that. Okay, I came from there so I can go back this way. Okay, I think I might know where I am now. Kind of. Yeah, okay, I'm back here, so now I just need to go this way. more of these strange contraptions. The ones I saw in the homes. She'd never felt like this before. She knew these tunnels well. She'd been down here hundreds of times, yet she was lost. Lost, confused, and afraid. I can't do anything with the machines. I think this is the last place down here. Pretty sure that's all of the tunnels I've explored. I didn't find any food either, which is weird. Wait, did I ever go that way? Because that's right back where I came from. Did I ever go left? Perhaps I never did. Hmm. No, I didn't. A family of rats lived amid the crates of dried food. They were perhaps the last animals left alive. Oh, that's the food. The uh, crates. Well, you know, normally I might feel bad about brute forcing a solution, but it says the code was long forgotten, which should mean that I can't find it anywhere because nobody knows it. So. There's only so many combinations. Let's try the same as the other one. But the first three pressed down. Oh god, not my flashlight. <laughs> it's gonna make it hard to do this. Just trying some patterns. Mm -hmm. How many combinations of this there actually are? I'll come back to this later.
Oh, crap. Now it's really late. In fact, it's so late, I might be able to enter the mountain now. But let's go to the... What is it? The... I forgot its name. The uh, locked place. That I have the key to. That I got from Isis. Um, Isis' house. Daniel was still thinking about his talk with Abel the day before as he absentmindedly picked the book up. Something caught his eye, or rather, the lack of something. Hmm? Whoa. The moon sliver was gone. That's what was taken? The moon sliver? What is the moon sliver? He stared at the empty... Uh, days? Days? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. For some time, struggling to comprehend this simple shocking fact. Has someone moved it? Isa, perhaps? She was the only one with the key to the chapel of infinite light. But Ellie or Abel could have borrowed it from her, as he had done, or taken it. Regardless, he had to tell the others. O oh world, O oh prison, dingy white, O oh ghostly shadow gray, your whelming lies of false delight are dark and cold as moonless night, and bleak as sunless day. The word of Hector. The moon's liver was written by the pure spring rain upon pages of dried leaves and found by noble Hector. The moon spoke to Hector, saying, Take this, the moon's liver, and make for it a place in the chapel of infinite light, for it is a holy document. Man cannot read it, but its every letter is known to the demons of the night, and greatly feared. Know that it will protect you, even should my light cease to bathe the night in holy silver. Give it a place of honor, and treat it as a prized possession, for it is your weapon against evil. And so Hector took the, the moon sliver and placed it in the Chapel of Infinite Light upon a silver pedestal, and the night was warm with light, and the day was bright with warmth. Okay, so our ward against evil is missing. Yeah, that's a problem. That's a big problem. That explains why Ellie had never felt that in the tunnels before, but now she did. It's because the moon sliver was missing. Now, the other one was the... Uh... Yeah, this is one. This is four. So hold on. Can I find the other parts of the series? I want to read it in order. Alright. Where's two? It's three, so this is this has got to be two. Yeah. The woodland teeth, the monster of the forest, was more tenacious than the other demons. It hated the people of Hector, and desired to take the island away from them. And it lurked in dark corners and unseen passageways, scheming horrific schemes. It came to pass that Ursula was taken, stalked by the woodland teeth in the dark underground, attacked, and dragged down to hell. Then the moon came to Hector in a dream, and said, Hector, the time has come, your great enemy has arrived. You would all do well to tremble, for his power is great and his depravity is unspeakable. Go, take the moon's liver from its pedestal and do battle. And so Hector went to the Chapel of Infinite Light and retrieved the moon's liver and went into the tunnels. Most of the text is illegible. Hector descended, darkness, terrible whispering, infinite and deep. Did not know how long he wandered, promises of brutal torture and mutilation waiting. Begone teeth of the forest, spoke the holy incantation written upon, returned to the surface.
Again, the moon came to Hector in a dream. The woodland teeth is vanquished. It said, your people are safe for now, but it still waits, lurking in the depths. It fears the moon sliver, and it will not dare appear again while the holy document remains in your possession. But know this, should the moon sliver ever be destroyed, even my divine light will not be able to save you from the wrath of the woodland teeth and the darkness of hell. Keep it safe, keep it ready, and may you live in prosperity on this island that I have given you. Let your prosperity be a sign that the words I speak are true. Well, the woodland teeth. It does seem that there was a forest here, so I guess before this place flooded. That explains where it was. The woodland monster was, well, in the woodlands, in the forest. Most likely. Hmm. Jesus Christ! Oh my god. This entire place is like about to be blown away. My god. I can barely even hear myself. Sweet quiet, sweet release from the auditory onslaught. Okay, here's what I want to do. Again, I'd feel bad about trying to brute force something if you were intended to actually be able to find the code, but since it says that the code was long forgotten, and it doesn't say it's rusted or anything like that, it makes me think you can actually get into it, so... I am going to try to brute force this, because if I can't get this open, I'm going to go crazy. I really want to know what's down here. So, I'm going to work on this, and I'll be right back. Oh, my god, uh, I just did it. I just did it. I just got in. I wasn't expecting to get in. I wasn't expecting to get in that soon. Okay, uh, shit. Was this place burned? It looks like there was a fire here. They had to know the truth, and Hector would not tell it. So down here, where nobody would find him, he wrote on scraps of paper. Maybe someday, someone would discover them. The truth, the truth about what? Shit. He wrote, maybe someday someone would discover them. Well, I'm guessing they were burned. It looks like somebody tried to destroy the evidence, assuming that they were actually kept down here. Which it sounds like they were. Somebody destroyed it. Okay. I think it's time to go into the mountain. Okay, out into the wild craziness for a minute.
Isa couldn't remember the last time she'd been under the mountain. There was no reason to come here, but she had looked everywhere else. She clutched the old knife in her right hand. Yesterday, the moon sliver went missing. Today, Ellie, Daniel, and Abel were all nowhere to be found. She knew the word of Hector by heart. The sinister implications were not lost on her. Okay, so I am Isa, and I do have the knife, and I am looking for the moon sliver, and it has just happened. The disappearance, which explains why the flashlight was still on. The one I'd found where someone was missing. Ellie? She called. Daniel? Abel? Abel heard her and answered. I'm here. Uh, I find that suspicious. And there was something strange about his voice, something Isa didn't like. What are you doing here? I'm reading of ages past, he said. Do you know where Ellie and Daniel are, she said. I do not, he said. They are missing, she said. They are missing and the moon sliver is missing. Do you understand me? Do you understand what this implies? I do, he said. Night will fall in a few hours, and we need to stick together. We can sleep in the same house, mine or yours. We'll keep the fire burning. We'll keep the door locked. And we will pray, Abel. We will pray to the unseen moon for mercy and protection. Are you happy here, Isa? We can't stay in the dark. It thrives in the dark. Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. Please, Abel. And there were tears in his eyes, and he struggled to control his voice. Isa, I know you. I know every inch of you, and I know every corner of your mind. You aren't happy. None of us are happy. Isa didn't respond. I'm staying here. The tears were flowing freely now. I would like it if you stayed with me, Isa. Please stay with me. It will find you, Abel. I let it out, Isa. I destroyed the moon sliver. Isa was shocked and silent. I burned it yesterday, after I talked with Daniel. Her eyes were filling with betrayed, angry tears. What? Abel? No. Why? Do you want to be dragged to hell? Do you want us to be dragged there with you? We're already in hell. This island. This horrible, barren, lonely island. This place of sin. This is hell. I saw the blasphemous scraps of paper Jeremiah found those many years ago. I read them before they were destroyed. Perhaps I was the only one who did. And, and, and I did not believe them. But I have lived life since then. And I have seen the truth of their words. Isaac could not respond as tears streamed down her face. She just kept walking towards the sound of his voice. The knife clutched in her hand. You did not read the blasphemous scraps, Isa, but I did. And I remember them with incredible clarity. Supernatural clarity, even. Fear not the dark shadows or the scratches in the night. For the woodland teeth is your salvation. It is your escape. It said this. And more, Isa. The Woodland Teeth is not here to take us to hell. It is here to take us away from hell. She could see him ahead, her flashlight beam cutting through the sickly fog. He was sitting in a chair, a book on his lap. As she approached, she could see that he was crying too. 
I believe the word of Hector, she said, and I will not go to hell. Please, trust me. Please. I believe the word of Hector, she said again, and she put the knife to her chest, point first. No. No, Isa, please don't. Stay with me, don't leave me alone. I love you, she spat tearfully. I love you so much. She closed her eyes and pushed. She remembered where the heart was located, from one of her father's old books. Abel was too slow to catch her falling body. He knelt beside her and sobbed for some time. He was not a strong young man anymore, but Isa's body was light. He would take her out to the water. She had always loved the water. But then what? Read? Read until it found him? No. He didn't feel like reading anymore. He was ready to be rid of this entire cursed island, books and all. He would simply wander aimlessly and freely to take one last look at the island and feel the wind blowing the memories away. And then, when night fell, he would return. And wait. I didn't realize I was supposed to walk forwards. Um, whoops. Awkward. <laughs> Wasn't sure what the hell I was looking at. Uh, morning dawned on the empty island. Cold and bright and windy. Okay, well, it was basically the end anyway. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was, like, waiting for something to happen. Awkward. It's an interactive credit sequence, which is pretty cool. I like those. Yeah, that was wonderful. That was a wonderful game. I really enjoyed it. It's really interesting. The way I was constantly kind of... Well, not constantly, but mostly guessing who I was actually playing as, and then when I thought I knew, it switched around on you. But in a very natural way. Now, I thought it was Isa, for a while there. And it turns out, no, you're not. You're returning the next night, back there. <laughs> you're just kind of reliving everything that happened. And then you know... As soon as you turn around, 
it's going to be there. And it was. <laughs> that was awesome. That was really awesome. That was so well told. The story. I'm really impressed with it. Yeah, wow. I'm really impressed with that. Huh. I mean, I like the writing to begin with, but... The way the story was told is really unique. Very cool. And it's just the right level of creepy, too. It's got a bit of horror game in it, obviously, but it's not the cheap, jump-scary kind. That This is the kind of horror that I really like. Very creepy, enough to keep me on my toes and make me worried. But not at all cheap in any way. It's awesome. Alright, well, I think I'm going to split... I guess I pretty much gave away all my thoughts right there. <laughs> but I do want to do a review video on it, so... I'll make one of that right about now, actually. But in the meantime, thank you for coming, on, coming along with me on my journey through the Moon Sliver. And thank you for watching.